Thank you. Man. What made you What made you start that sort of business? Yeah, so it's a bit of a journey, right? I think I think started well. My journey has been a journey, right? So it's probably taken me about ten years of networking and and understanding startups to get to the point of doing my own thing. Mm. Uh, you know, I worked for companies in the fintech space before fintech was really a buzzword, mm. like Flexi Group, which is now Hum. Um, that was probably one of the first innovators in Australia to do instant credit right. decisioning. Uh, you would know from. From your background, uh, you know. Well, background. I didn't know they were. I didn't know they were the first in the space to do instant. Um, They're one of the first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what? As in, on the spot, whilst they're at Harvey Norman or whatever it may have been at the time, where you could do that interest-free period, they were the first ones that would give you a real-time decision. Real time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I think majority of the of the of the loans that we done was real time. So they were, they were like the one of the original fintechs uh, in Australia, and I worked in their sales team and made a lot of connections there and, and understand. How distribution and sales works. Mm. Uh, third party distribution is a very big part of most businesses. Uh, then went to Prosper and there, you know, really learned from the founders, Bo and Greg, you know, how to really get people to buy into your, the, the journey of the business. And that what does, really what does Prosper do? So Bo, Prosper does anti code small business loans. Okay. Pretty much instantly. Right. Uh, majority of the customers of approvals. And at the time was very, very uh, new. The fintech sector was starting to emerge. And Prosper was one of the leaders for the SME space mm. uh, for lending because you know, most banks don't really care if you do under 10 mil revenue. Right. Right. So there was a huge opportunity for Prosper at the time. And you know, the founders, Bo and Greg, were just amazing at um, you know, getting people to buy into the business, the mm. culture, the journey. And that's what I really want to learn from that. And at Plenty is kind of a bit of both. Like, So Plenty was after Prosper. So Plenty you was after Prosper. How long were you at Prosper for? So about a year, mm. very short stint. Um, I actually went back to Flexi. Okay. And then went to plenty after that. When when you went back to Flexi, was it still in sales? Yes, yeah, so I actually led a team, um, okay. which was the online independent retailers. Uh, that was just before Zip Money Afterpay was about to go hard. And that was my competitor. So you can imagine how that went. Mm. Uh, we actually done really well, but the technology of the business at the time didn't really evolve what they had six, seven years ago. And unfortunately, um, you know, Afterpay and Zip really emerged as the leaders in that category. Mm. But um, went to... Went to Plenty after that, and Plenty was cool because I actually learned the other side, which is the investor relations and watching Dan, the founder, and working with him on you know strategy for the sales team and how that meant how that funneled down to raising capital, investors, and meeting the board members for for, for, for the first time, and really just watched him and how he, how he navigates for investors is amazing at it, mm. right? So kind that's of that's a that's a big skill for an entrepreneur, yeah. you know? Yeah, look, I, I don't want to say I left that like like an expert, but it gave me insight to what these you know, investors look for, like the, like the commercial acumen that he mm. had was amazing, right? He had right. people eating out of his hand, right? Mm. So, um, what was sorry to cut you off, yeah. my bro? What was the role at Plenty? What was your role? Yeah, at I was head of channel development. Okay, so I basically looked after our third party accounts, so big partnerships with finance aggregators. Oh wow! Yeah, so well, that's perfect leading into Car Clarity. Yeah, it's it's a very similar. Kind of concept. Now we use an aggregator, right, right? For example, but I think um, at Plenty, the cool thing was it, uh, the scene ago. When, when I joined Plenty, it was actually I was there for about three years, mm. and I think when I started there, I think it just hit like a hundred million loans, right? Okay, which is, which is which was big at the time, right? And the time, like like recently, they're almost at like two billion. Jesus, right? And I think when I left after three years, I already at like half a billion. Right, I, actually, a bit more, maybe almost a billion. Wow! In line. So, just seeing like that, being actually help and responsible for some of the high growth was cool, man. Like, yeah, and and it, it's it's crazy just how scalable um, fintech businesses are. To go from a hundred mil, which already sounds like a dream, yeah. but to end up at like two billion in such a in, in how long? How oh, long? it was probably what three, four years after that. Is that is that? Mainly through is that mainly through uh, venture capital invested in the yeah. business to scale to scale it up. Yeah, look, I, I has think, to be. Yeah, well, look, I think it just just depends, right? Like, I, I wouldn't say that you don't need venture capital to scale a business, but does it make it easier and quicker? Absolutely, it does, mm. right? And I think well, we went down the path of raising equity, which is from from venture capitalists. And I know your journey is a little bit different, but you know, everyone everyone has a different journey, a different path, right? For us, it made sense to do it. And it comes with its trade-offs, mm. like uh, like ownership of the business, but we get to scale a lot quicker and grow a lot quicker, mm. right? And those hard nights actually shared with an investor, 
who feels the pain with you now. Mm. So it's not not as lonely as well as well. So, but at Plenty, definitely, like there is there is a bunch of capital, right? Mm. And they were investing for growth. Right. And did you see that in front of your eyes, like you know, a whole bunch of capital coming in, expanding the team? Yeah. Um, yeah. How big? How how many staff members was that? Plenty. Yeah. When you started, I think when I started there was about thirty. I was like number twenty five or something mm. ish. Mm. And then when I left, probably like a hundred. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. So, do you like it, advice I give to people all the time is don't go and. Uh, work for a big ass company that's already set up absolutely try and find something that's in that in that range where it's 20 to 30 people it's still yeah. it's still finding its feet it's still figuring out its product market fit yeah. but it has the potential to scale yeah. up massively do you agree with that so i've had two opportunities like that a prosper right prosper actually raised more capital than plenty mm. and grew much quicker i think they got like 400 staff now right and when how many staff when you joined about 30 30 again. Yeah, 30 again. Do you think that's the sweet spot, 30 people? Oh, totally. Like, because you, you're still intimate. The business is still intimate with each other. Mm. Everyone knows each other. You know, the founders walk around. You get to speak to them. You get to watch, observe, but learn. You get to be in meetings that you probably shouldn't be in. Mm. But you get to learn and watch, right? Mm. And you hear conversations. And you see them when they raise capital. It's a big thing. Everyone's celebrating. And I think I mean, the advice, 150%. Don't go to university. Work for a startup. <laughs> like, like, honestly, like, you will learn in one year what you will learn in in 10 years of getting your degree and going to a shit corporate and then going to a startup anyways, mm. which most people are doing now. We look at, like, a lot of the startups, right? It's, there's, there's, in our space, in the tech and fintech space, a lot of it is ex-McKinsey consultants, Goldman Sachs consultants. They've gone, got their degree, gone to work for a corporate and realized it's crap. And they've gone to do a startup about something they're passionate about, mm. right? There's a reason why they're doing that, right? And I think what I have no degree. I, I got kicked out of school at year, year 11. Really? Right? I was a shitty kid. I was a bad why kid. Why did you get kicked out? Not going to school. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just not going to school and hang out the wrong crowd. Like mm. On my year 11 exam, mm. I got told my dad's waiting for me in the room and I shoot my pants and I got kicked out of school. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but you know what? Like, the one thing about you, you have to be, you have to be willing to work your ass off and willing, to observe and network and willing to take a risk, mm. right? You don't need a degree. Mm. If you have those qualities, you can be successful, right? I see a lot of podcasts and I see a lot of articles online about oh, working smarter, not harder. The number one thing I've learned personally is working hard is the ultimate piece to mm. be successful. Mm. You can't expect to be successful without working hard and putting time away, That's right? right? And sacrificing a lot, right? And for me, the second part is networking, right? Networking. I've always kept relationships. Like my angel investors, my first round, were literally people from Flexi Group, Prosper, and Plenty, mm. right? They're so all the investors? My angel investors. Wow. Right? So I used that network over time to actually give me cash because they believed in me. So everyone has their own journey, man, but I think I think uh, looking for a startup is the biggest learning curve you ever experienced in your life. Mm. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.